What's going on guys? Sai here and welcome back to the Boys RC channel. Today guys we've got the Tamiya Bruiser clone, otherwise known as the HGP407. Now the reason I went for this particular clone rather than the uh, original Tamiya Bruiser is a cost. Uh, a Tami original Tamiya Bruiser goes for a lot of money and two, I'm going to be upgrading it anyway. So there's no point getting an original if you are going to be upgrading the hell out of this thing and not keeping it as it should be. Uh, this is personal preference always. I don't support clones, but if you are going to be getting a clone, then you might as well go and upgrade it to your heart's content. Last time I ran this thing, it was out of the box. The transmission started making some really, really weird noises. So I need to take it all apart. It comes from China, RTR. Uh, ready to run so it needs to be stripped out re-lubed and thread locked so it is an identical clone to the tamiya bruiser as you guys can see i have already done the body worked on it finished it just need to do some little bit pieces to add onto it but for this one i've already gave it a head start and we can focus on the chassis the upgrades modifications and whatnot to get this thing a little bit more capable it has a free speed working transmission which is absolutely really really cool um and yeah this is literally a granddaddy it's not a very capable rc crawler i wouldn't recommend it for crawling competitions or anything like that but for trails absolutely it looks absolutely great and it is just nostalgic to look at <laughs> So we split up the disassembly of the chassis of the HGP407 slash Tamiya Bruiser. Now we are down to the nitty and gritty. So as you guys know, I had trouble with the transmission. So we're going to look into that a little bit more in depth as well, just to see what is causing it to um, not go into gear properly and just kind of grind a little bit as well. And you can kind of see as well, now that I've taken this apart, that there are some casing damages as well. I'm not sure if this is how it's supposed to be let me know in the comments below but you can definitely see definitely see some markings on there just wait for that to focus there you go a little bit here all, all around the casing and that's not the transmission is not the only thing i've noticed has a bit of like damage to it you can see the casing here a little bit this side isn't exactly the same as it is here like seamless and pretty much you can see um, and also on one of the um, wheel hubs you can see that kind of like a, a manufacturer defect let's go ahead and get into this um, axle so i'm not 100 percent too sure um, how to dismantle it i guess i'll start with the hubs first so let's have a quick look into that let me just get my box wrench. Oh, that is quite stiff. So when I was disassembling this truck, there's like literally one or two nut and bolts that were thread locked. Everything else was completely unthreadlocked. 
which is quite bad. Any type of like vibration or anything like that, um, you know, would result in screws being lost. That's the bearing here. Not bad. A lot of people complain that these kind of break apart and whatnot. But mine's pretty good. We'll inspect all the bearings anyway. Is that anything? No. no. You can kind of see inside the axle here, the same manufacturing defects. A little bit here, We've got huge gaps all around, you can see that. And then again, these axles aren't designed to be perfect. They are cast iron, so I assume there will be some imperfections with that. So look at this bearing. Once again, pretty good. Just needs a little bit of a clean. We can definitely do that. Put that to the side. So by the looks of it, I just have to take all these little screws out, hex screws out. So let me just get my hex driver out. Speed this up a little bit. Mm, oh, we're gonna need a different size. Let me get the diff lock one out first, because that is the right size. So the diff lock X screw is located here, and that's it there. Tiny thing, don't lose it. Little grub screw there. And the other one, so I was using two mil, so we're probably gonna need the 1.5. Got 1.5 there. Once again, no issues on doing these, so they're not thread locked, which is, very disappointing that these trucks were only limited to RTR or ready to run and then they made a kit out of these and to be honest the kits didn't really last too long and I can see why because you'd want to build it yourself and do it properly. Moment of truth guys, how do we, there we go, it kind of pops off. Quite a bit of grease in there as you guys can see. In there. And they're slightly worn out, kind of like accumulated in the middle there, which is kind of pointless because we want the grease to be around here. But fair play, that was actually quite well greased. Let's just remove this bevel gear. Let's have a quick look at it. That's fine. Let's have a look at this. A few bearings here. So look at those, completely fine. Metal shield bearings. Got this little aluminum housing as well. Have a look at this side. So that bearing looks actually fine. Another aluminum housing on the other side. Let's inspect the main gear itself. So the bearings are completely fine, which is good. Don't have to replace those. The tooth or the teeth actually look okay. So that's a good sign. No bullet bullet dodge there. You can kind of see how to dismantle it a little bit further, but we'll keep it as it is because we don't need to go anywhere further with this, we'll just give it a clean as it is. Alrighty guys, so here we have the front differential assembly. So you've got the diff housing here, uh, you've got the steering knuckle arms here and here as well, and the hub mounts on each side as well. So steering angle on these is actually not overly too bad. It could be a little bit better. We might have to see if we can improve and get a little bit more of a steering angle, but that is not bad overall. That will do it just fine. Uh, so you've got a little bit of a, a C-clip here, holding that down on there. Got the wheel hubs here, standard ones on that. And yeah, there's no deformities on the casting itself. Not great lines, maybe here a little bit. Just that there, like a little, um, it's like it's a hit something there. 
with a coin. 